say again, please. Uh, here's the way we've had a problem. Well, Houston, we don't have a problem because what we're going to talk today about is what kind of work does running water do? This is super cool. Oh my gosh. And some terms we know about. Erosion, erosion, erosion. Who's the key player in erosion? You know what it is? It's a single drop of water. Water is what causes erosion. So let's take a look at some of the biggest rivers in the world. I think this is pretty cool as we look at this. The Amazon River is the biggest one. This is now measured by discharge. And it's, look, look the number of cubic feet per feet for a second is huge. The second biggest one is the Congo River. That's interesting. You, we don't think about this one, but look at the number. This is, you know, 7 million. This is only 1.5 million. This is just crazy, the number of differences. The Yangtze River in China is next. And the Mississippi River, the one that we're close to, it seems like a huge river, and it is. It's only 593,000 versus 7 million. This is just crazy. All right, let's talk about uh, as, as a river is flowing, the work that it does, there is several loads. This is important. The first is called the dissolved load. So this is the amount of sediment. Dissolved. Now remember, dissolved is like salt dissolving in water. It's so it, it, the, the stream would still be clear when it's the dissolved load. This picture is probably the most indicative. The dissolved load, see if we zoom in, it's going to be ions. Remember, back to chemistry class, positives and negatives. So it could be a clear, often this is uh, some kinds of salt, sodiums, chlorides, there'll be some calcium ions, you know, the charges, remember all that stuff from chemistry class. That's called the dissolved load. The second thing I want to talk about is the suspended load. This is, uh, it's going to appear as muddy water, so it's not dissolved. But suspended. Uh, that's sort of defining the word suspended load with the word suspension. But a suspension, if you can remember back to chemistry class, is that after time, if you let it settle, it will settle over time, but since the water is moving, it just flows along. A suspended load is easy to see. This particular river that we're looking at is a suspended load. How do I know that? It looks like dirty, muddy water. So there are lots of little particles of dirt that's flowing down this river. And yeah, that's a suspended load. Now the bed load is the stuff at the bottom. <laughs> All right, that's the stuff that sits at the bottom. So let's take a look. This uh, picture kind of shows the dissolved load is invisible. The suspended load tends to be silt and clay. So maybe you should say that. Let's go back. The suspended load tends to be silt plus clay, right? And the bed load is the sand and the gravel and the boulders at the bottom, right? So let's say stuff at the bottom it tends to be sand, rocks, boulders, all that stuff at the bottom. And we've got some other terms here we'll talk about. There's they tend to roll because as, as the river flows, in this case, to the right, it is moving the dissolved load, the suspended load, and to some degree the bed load, the bed load the slowest because it's the biggest pieces, down the river. And then we have this weird term called saltation. Saltation, take a look, I've got saltation right here. Now that sounds like the word salt. But actually, it doesn't mean salt, like sodium chloride. It actually means, it comes from a Latin or something that means to bounce. So you've got the parts that are bouncing, 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 bouncing as they move down the river, and that's called saltation, bouncing. So the key term in saltation is these are these substances, and they tend to be part of the bed load that are bouncing, 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 bouncing down the thing. Like, tigger, <laughs> tigger, <laughs> squirrel. All right, and then... Uh, Here's a new term, and this is a little confusing, I think, and the term is called competence. Now, competence measures, this is important, the largest particles it can carry, all right? So a river can carry, this is the ones that are moving, it can't carry a big boulder, or can it? It can carry a big boulder, but sometimes it has a higher capacity or capacitance for it to move water. Now, the faster the speed of the river, the larger the the cat, it can, or the boulder, or whatever, the, the substance it can bring down. And it's interesting that it, it's proportional to the square of the velocity. And this has been mathy, but it's, it's really cool. So if I were to double, let's think about this. If I double the stream velocity, the velocity of the stream, S, the V velocity of the stream, what's going to happen is it will quadruple, or times four, 
the competence. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's easy, right? If you, if you double something, you know, times 2, but it's squared, 2 squared is 4. If I were to triple it, 3 squared is 9. And so it could carry much, much larger particles. And, and the point of this is when you have a big event, like a flood event, where the stream velocity increases significantly, then the competence increases with the square of the velocity. And now the size of the, of the, the particle that can be carried down the stream gets much quicker, much, much faster. That's what competence is. And here's a, a good way to kind of look at this whole thing. So we've got erosion. Transfer, erosion happens when you have, uh, so this is the diameter. This is the size of, of the thing that can be carried, right? Tiny, tiny, tiny. And you've got a slow velocity in centimeters per second. It's just going to be transportation, okay? And it's going to just get deposited, all right, if you're at this slow velocity. The, the, these bigger ones are going to just get deposited. Because you see, it's not going very fast, so the particles have enough time to settle to the bottom of the river. All right? But if we were to increase the velocity to, let's say, 100 okay, centimeters per second, now what the, the first parts, these are being transported. Okay, the smaller ones are being transported. And then the bigger ones are being eroded. They're being broken off from the side of the river. And then we get to deposit. They get deposited when they are um, at this speed, when they are a little bit larger. And if you get super duper you know, speedy, all you're going to do is you're going to be eroding it. It's not going to cause. So this, is, this cool graph helps us understand the concept of competence. And that leads us to uh, just an important term. It's called alluvium. <laughs> alluvium is just the sediment. It's a big fancy word for sediment. So this is the stuff that settles to the bottom. So we've got the river coming down here. And over time, this is all the sediments from that river. And actually, this is the sediments. And this is the, cause this is a, this is a river valley. And this river valley is, is built up of all these sediments. This is where sedimentary rocks are going to form, et cetera, et cetera last thing we're going to talk about in this particular segment is the erosional power. So that is the, it's, it's how powerful, as I say this, what's going to cause the rocks to move down the river, right? And I guess we've re referred to this, but it's the stream velocity that relates to the competence. Also what type of load that is. So if it's lots of big rocks, um, is it more dissolved load? Is it more, it, it depends on what's sort of there. What are the size of the particles? Again, we talked about a little bit earlier. And also what's the nature of the particles? Some of them are going to be more rounded. And uh, actually, as the, as, the, as the river goes down, I'm probably jumping ahead a little bit. But even the, the angular nature of the rocks, because this, is this, if you've got an angular rock and it hits this rock constantly and constantly, it's going to start to round this rock right here. And it's going to get broken down over time because all these little collisions are weathering and eroding the the bed of the stream. So streams, streams are cool, aren't they? We're learning some really cool stuff about streams. We'll see you in class.